dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. In some ways, this is a strange one for me. Ever since I transitioned away from wet lab work into computer-based data science, working from home has always been a part of academic life. When all you need is a laptop and a data set, the world is your hot desk. Thinking back to my PhD and postdoc work before COVID, I would say there were a few weeks where I worked 100% from my desk in the office, and this was usual for most people around me. When I began my PhD, my supervisor was only part-time at Newcastle. She spent most of her week in Cambridge, so Skype meetings were very normal from the start. Flexibility has always been prominent in research culture. I often find myself wondering, why does it feel so different now? The facts are that since the pandemic, many in my field of research are working from home far more than in the past. Indeed, there are more empty desks on the average work day than occupied ones. In this blog, I want to explore the shift. Is it universal? Are only certain disciplines affected? Is it a good or bad thing? Overall, how is it affecting the culture of working in research? Firstly, from a purely free market perspective, people enjoy the flexibility of working from home. If people did not enjoy it, then there would surely be a lot less people taking up the opportunity. When thinking about working from home, I often come at it with my equality, diversity and inclusion leader hat on. The flexibility provided by working from home is often very beneficial for colleagues with protected characteristics. In many places, workspaces are less than ideal for people with a range of disabilities, for example. It can make planning work around caring responsibilities much easier, as well as giving parents more flexibility around childcare provision, which again is a burden most likely to fall upon women researchers. There are financial considerations, several of which overlap with the earlier points. At this point in time, the cost of living is a big pressure on many of us. The opportunity to save the money you would normally spend on that train, bus or petrol for commuting is an attractive one. Additionally, many university campuses are located in city centres, where the cost of living is most acute. Money is not the only thing that can be saved. Many would argue that working from home is more time efficient. It is safe to assume many researchers spend around two hours travelling to and from work. Many would argue that those two hours would be better spent getting straight to work. As well as the preference of the individual, there are also wider considerations to more working from home. One is the environment. Most research institutions are trying to cut down on their carbon footprint. Less people travelling to work, again, often into universities and busy city centres, means less impact on the environment. In my experience, there have always been issues in universities around overcrowding in labs and office space. Naturally, there are many who can benefit from workspaces becoming less crowded. The PhD student or postdoc who has a hot desk could get some permanent space of their own. Being more welcoming to working from home can also benefit institutions when it comes to hiring. One of the ongoing issues for a career in research is instability. If employers did not expect you to move across the country to work on a relatively short-term contract, researchers could get a more diverse experience of research without having to uproot your home life. It also makes it easier to attract more prestigious researchers to institutions, particularly those in more remote or historically deindustrialized areas. For example, researchers who have built a career around the so-called Golden Triangle of Oxford, Cambridge and London are more willing to take positions in the north of England, Scotland or Wales, if it does not require a huge change in lifestyle. This could help rebalance expertise around the country, giving a boost to institutions far from London. On a smaller scale, as researchers we are notorious for having our own little rituals and way of doing things, and no two people are the same. In my field by statistics, this means working from home can mean I have my own office set up the way I like it, I can use my own preferred hardware and software. When I work from campus on the other hand, I have to use the PC that the faculty have approved and go through sometimes lengthy routes to get software. The most infuriating, not being able to update stats software through the institution firewall. There are clear reasons why the shift towards working from home has advantages for both researchers as individuals and for improving research culture by addressing some of the embedded issues around a research career. 
I would argue there are plenty of downsides, however. The flip side of research spaces feeling overcrowded is them feeling empty, which personally I find more challenging. It is often the case that the computer labs and offices in my building have only a handful of people working in them on any one day. There have also been occasions where I and other colleagues are the only people in the building that day at all. Isolation is often something that comes up as something that researchers can struggle with, particularly as a postgraduate student or early career researcher, as the projects we work on are specific to us. Adding physical isolation into the mix can exacerbate those feelings, or indeed push others into feeling them for the first time. Losing the social aspects of work and research are probably the most obvious consequences of the rise of working from home. Aside from the mental aspects of not being able to catch up with colleagues, there are the less obvious impacts on our research itself, and like most issues, they tend to affect researchers early in their career more than their seniors. One of the most important aspects of research careers is the ability to build collaborations through networking. Although ideally the goal is to build connections with researchers across the country and the world, these networking skills often begin at home with the researchers in the same office, lab, department or institution. Less people being around naturally reduces the amount of organic networking we develop on a daily basis. Networking is not the only thing researchers are potentially missing out on. When I think back to my earliest time in research as a PhD student, I learned incredible amounts outside of my supervisors from the people I worked next to every day. I learned huge amounts in terms of quantitative methodologies, Problems that could have had me stumped for days were solved by an easy 10 minute chat with someone nearby who had dealt with the same problem earlier. This could be as simple as a postdoc in the lab who can help you improve on a technique you find tricky. My skills in coding would have been glacial if it wasn't for the other researchers experienced in different languages. I find in my lab now there is less diversity of experience immediately accessible, where there was once before. In quantitative research, it's very common for researchers to have a preference for coding languages and software. It used to be the case that around you, there'll be the person who's the expert in R, a Python expert, the Stata expert, or something more specific like M+. And now although these colleagues are still staff members, when you're not in the room it makes it more difficult to draw on their knowledge, making our research much less efficient. Tech fatigue is another aspect that some of us are feeling as a result of the new working patterns. I find myself in far more Teams or Zoom calls than I used to, and there is something about them that I always find requires more energy than being in an in-person meeting. Also, I find when working from home, I have much more screen time in general. No doubt this is a personal failing on my part, but I find it easy to slip into a routine of waking up straight into the home office and either working through lunch or spending lunch looking at another screen, then finishing work and probably watching TV. There is a loss of the small breaks from the screens such as meetings, coffee breaks, having lunch with colleagues. On a similar note, I find working from home can blur the line between work and home life. I'm much more likely to be at work early and leave on time to get home for the dogs when I'm going into campus. While it is common that at home, I may stay a little longer at my desk, just because I have nowhere else to go. Incidentally, I'm working from home today and writing this blog at 7.30pm. Finally, there is an element of inequality to the more flexible work patterns we are in. I've found that it is often the more junior students and early career researchers which would prefer a fuller workspace. There are the often undervalued social aspects of being younger and less likely to have families at home. And seeing people at work is often the most time you are around people, and where many friendships are made, where it is more common for senior researchers to have more family commitments, such as children, or have a more diverse portfolio career, where the flexibility is often a strength. There is also the purely professional inequality. Early career researchers have far more to lose by not having the opportunity to build fruitful networks and collaborations early or not having the ability to learn from a diverse group of researchers around them on a daily basis. It is not to say that these factors do not affect senior researchers. However, they are more likely to have good networks from periods where labs were full. It was easier or even encouraged to travel, or mastered many of the methodological questions more junior researchers have not. In the end, of course, it comes down to personal preference. 
in some ways I feel like a hypocrite, that I have always taken advantage of the flexibility of working from home. It is one of the reasons I enjoy working in biostatistics. You can't argue that there aren't many ways in which working from home can improve research culture, especially for those who have more complex home lives, responsibilities, or indeed disabilities. My personal opinion is despite these benefits, we are possibly creating new or more entrenched issues. It might be cliche, but I miss the buzz of a busy lab, chatting to people about the interesting work they are doing, talking through career plans or the next steps in a study, and just catching up with friends and hearing about what's going on in my colleagues' lives. My head often says working from home is more practical. My heart, however, is telling me that we may be losing connections and an energy we may have taken for granted. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.